Hey folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. I'm so glad you're with us today. What we're talking about today, we have two topics. One is going to be signs of depression. And the second one is going to be ways to live longer. Secrets to people that live longer. I'm going to give you their secrets, my secrets on how to live longer. But let's start out with depression. With COVID and with the situation that we're in right now, a lot of patients come to us and they have neck pain and back pain and shoulder pain, the classic things that people would come to a wellness center for. Neck pain, back pain, digestive issues, nutritional concerns. But as I start to talk to them, I, I, when it first started, I thought, well, these people just aren't in a good mood today. Because sometimes, you know, people aren't in a good mood, they're in pain. But what I did was, the more I dug deeper, I started realizing that a lot of patients are suffering from depression. And I know how to spot the signs. I'm going to teach you how to spot the signs. Because it isn't always just I'm sitting home, you know, in my bed with the uh, uh, covers over my head and I'm, I'm miserable all the time. There's a, a functional depression. And if you have that, I want to talk about things that we can do for you. Uh, first, how to spot it, because you don't, again, if you, can't di if you don't know it's there, you can't diagnose it, and then what we can do for you. So you're going to be surprised at some of these things, and you may even say, I have some of these signs. And if you do, we're going to talk about what to do for it. So let's jump right into it. I've got a lot to cover. Number one is shopping sprees. And this has become a big issue with internet shopping. People have found it so easy to go online and you can buy just about anything. You can buy anything from a car to kitchen tables to clothes. And so if your shopping is out of control, this could be a sign that you're depressed. And what we're trying to do when we see some of these things is we're trying to give our body some excitement. And if you've listened to our shows before, we talk a lot about the brain. And there's a part of the brain called the nucleus acubens or uh, cubans, depends how you pronounce it. And the nucleus acubens releases a chemical called dopamine. And dopamine gives you pleasure. And so when we get depressed, we might want to try to stimulate that dopamine to be released. And it's released sometimes physically and sometimes chemically. And chemically, of course, would be food. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But there may be a physical release as well. And there are certain things that you might do to give you a little bit of high. You get a little rush from it. And shopping is one of them. And a friend of mine, years ago, um, we, were, uh, we were studying when I was working on my orthopedic degree. He was one of the orthopedists with me. Uh, his name was Joe as well. And his wife at the time, uh, I'd never seen it, but she apparently had rooms full of clothes with the tag still on them, piles of clothes, not even hanging up, piles of clothes with the tag still on them. And so finally they, they did analysis with her and they found out that she was really depressed. She had a great life. She was pretty. He was handsome. They, had a, they made a good living. Everything was great. But there were other issues involved as well. And so they dealt with the depression and they got over this shopping spree thing. So it's a big issue that some people have. So if you're trying to cover up your spending, that's when it starts to become an issue. Maybe there's somebody in your life you don't want them to know that you're out there spending. So you have a separate credit card, a separate bank account. Uh, for some people who are depressed, it's not uncommon for compulsive buying. And it serves as the distraction and as a self-esteem booster. Oh, I look so good in this shirt. Oh, those boots are going to look so cool. And it, you're trying to boost your own self-esteem. Uh, it doesn't work because retail therapy is very short-lived and the high crashes pretty quickly. Uh, you might also be aware that shopping sprees could be a sign of mania or bipolar disorder. So many times if you're doing something out of control, no matter what it is, you have to stop and think, what is this? Now, I did a show on addiction a while ago. So if you go to our website, drjoe.com, and type in the word addiction. We did a show on addiction, and we, we broke down addiction really simply. We talked about what addiction is. Again, we talked about the nucleus acubens, and we talked about how to deal with it. So if you think you have an addiction, whether it's food or drugs or promiscuity or gambling or shopping, you might want to listen to the show we did on addiction, and we, we're going to give you a good breakdown as to how that's all happening. And I remember when I was studying, you know, I have five board certifications. And when I was studying orthopedics, uh, my instructor, Rick Ackerman, said, uh, if, you don't, if you don't know it exists, you can't diagnose it. And that was really stuck with me because if I, I, that's why you have to study all these different diseases. And sometimes, uh, like we have a medical doctor in our office, and he and I will sit down with the, pa with the patient records and go, what do you think it is? I don't, what do you think it is? And putting our minds together, we can say, you know what, maybe it's arsenic toxicity, something really bizarre that we would never think of. And then we say, okay, let's do a little digging there. So knowing that it exists is the key. So if you have something that's you're hiding from someone or it's adversely affecting your life, then you might have an addiction. And then you got to start dealing with that. Drinking heavily, about a third of people with major depression abuse alcohol. So if you feel like you need to drink to cope with anxiety and depression, you may be one of them. I've known people in my life that do this. Well, I'm just going to have a glass of wine at the end of the day to unwind. Anybody say that? Okay, that might be a problem. 
because why do you need a glass of wine to unwind? What is it that's causing you to be so wound up? And is that just an excuse? Well, I just like to have a glass of wine at the end of the day. It's no big deal. It's red wine. It's good for me. It's good for my heart. It's not good for your heart, by the way. Um, and you just use it as an excuse to have wine. I had a stressful day. I had an argument with my significant other. I, but people I work with are jerks. <sighs> yeah, I get that. But there's other things you can do. There's healthier things you can do. Go for a walk. There are herbal supplements you can take. You can take valerian as a supplement. It's not going to be addictive. And so there are other things you can do to unwind. Um, we're going to talk about that in a second, the stress that you may have in your body and what to do with those stresses. But if drinking uh, provides a lift when you're down, alcohol is a depressant. So what's actually happening is you're making yourself worse. And that's what I see with addictions, of course. And, you know, even like uh, I've never done heroin, but I saw a show the other day on uh, drug dealers. And apparently with heroin, and I didn't know this, I've never done it, it gives you just a quick rush. And then you crash. And then you get real tired. And then what do you want to do? You want to do more heroin. So I think it was heroin. Anyway, that's what the drugs do. And so now you become addicted to this because you just what you're, you're, you're called chasing a dragon. You'll never get as high as you did the first time. That first time you did a you know, retail therapy or the first time you got drunk, you're never going to get that high because the brain uh, buffers itself. It says, okay, I shouldn't get that high. That's dangerous. I'm going to downregulate my brain so I never get that high again. And so now you're saying, wait a minute, I felt really good the first time I did that whatever. And then you want to do it again and again and again. So that's where the problems come in. So if you're drinking heavily, if you're, dr if you're drinking as an excuse, it could be a sign of depression. We're going to talk about what to do about it in a second here. Forgetfulness. Depression could be one reason you get a uh, foggy brain. Uh, studies show that prolonged depression or, or stress can raise the body's level of something called cortisol. Now, a couple of years ago, I had my cortisol level tested and my cortisol level was extremely high. And what happens with cortisol is it's supposed to start out high in the morning. That's what wakes you up in the morning. And then as the day goes on, your cortisol levels start to drop and you get tired. That's normal cortisol function. Cortisol is produced by your adrenal glands. The adrenal glands can eventually burn out. And that's why we take cortisol level tests on a lot of our patients. And if it starts out high and goes down low, perfect. You're right where you want to be. If it's high all day, dangerous. If it's low all day, you burned out your adrenal glands. And we've got to do things to get the body healed again. Uh, one of the things I do is I take Dr. Joe's adrenal support. And when I started taking adrenal support and then I realized, I diagnosed my high cortisol, I said, why, am I, my, why is my cortisol so high? And I had to do an analysis and, uh, you know, running the practice, practice at the time, um, I realized I need help. I can't do this all on my own. So we hired other doctors to come in. I trained them. And so I got to the cause of my problem, not just treating the symptoms. So if the cortisol level is high, Dr. Joe's adrenal support, of course, the minimum supplements everybody should be taking are super greens and essential source. I can't imagine not taking those every day. But if you have a high stress job or high stress life, which I don't know anybody who doesn't, I'm going to recommend Dr. Joe's adrenal support as well. And all those are on the website, drjoe.com. But getting to the cause of the stress is the key. And is chemical, physical, and mental stress. Chemical stress is food. And we cover that a lot on this show. And on our website, drjoe.com, we have over 1,500 hours of podcasts. So if you have a concern about what to eat, what not to eat, um, allergies, uh, digestive issues, diabetes, high blood pressure, we've done shows on that. Just type in what you're looking for in the search bar, hit the enter bar, and chances are we've done a show on it. Listen to the show. Make that your new addiction. Go to drjoe.com and really tune in and learn a lot. Now, if you're a podcast junkie, and a lot of people are, our podcast is, you want to search your podcast ser uh, service, Dr. Joe, for the health of it. Dr. Joe for the health of it, and you could have nonstop 24-hour day Dr. Joe podcasts. And so that's available to you as well. But the website, we, we work real hard to keep it as fresh as possible because there's always information that we're coming up with that you need, you the listener needs. So again, the website's there 24 hours a day, drjoe.com. So chemicals, search the website. I, I don't want to do a whole show on nutrition today. Um, physical, if you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, arthritis, folks, just come see us. We have a chiropractic and medical center, and so we, we incorporate the best of both worlds. And we sit down with our nurses, our medical doctors, our chiropractors, and we say, what's going to be the best treatment for you, the patient? 
Is it going to be medicine? Is it going to be chiropractic? Is it going to be nutrition? Is it going to be fixing the digestive system? Uh, is it going to be PRP, which is taking your own cells out of your body, spinning them down and re-injecting them back into the body to speed up the aging, uh, the healing process? I'm sorry. So arthritis, erectile dysfunction, urinary leakage. Um, we just had a patient yesterday, um, three kids. She goes, Doc, I, I, I don't have any pleasure anymore when it comes to romance, and I'm leaking urine. And so PRP might be the answer for that because you can inject it into the area and tighten up the muscles. So uh, we really have what I would consider an amazing array of services that you, the patient, can benefit from. And I was talking to another fellow. He's, he's going, to, going back to Afghanistan. He came in just to get treated. And uh, he said, I had no idea that these services even existed. Chiropractic, PRP, nutrition, adjusting the stomach, uh, uh, supplements. He said, I've been to a lot of doctors. They never told me these things exist. So that's why we, I, I'm always trying to add new services for you, the patient, but also for me, the patient. I'm a patient too. So if it's something I'm going to benefit from, I want to have it available to you. So all our services are on the website, drjoe.com. Just click on that and you'll see a drop-down tab and you'll uh, uh, drop down. Um, yeah, drop-down tab. You'll see all the things we have. So getting to the cause of the stress is going to be really important because over time, if we're stressed out, we can become depressed. And that's what we're talking about today, hidden signs of depression. Oh, by the way, if you want to make an appointment, you can do it right online, drjoe.com. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. That's in the Atlanta area. So you can do it right online, drjoe.com. Uh, physical stress, we, we talked about chemical stress. The mental stress is what we're, that's kind of what you're thinking about. We're talking about here, signs of depression. Mental stress can become, can come from physical stress, can come from emotional stress. Number one stress we experience as humans is death of a loved one. The number two stress we experience as humans is moving. Now, when I say moving, you can move to a new house, you can move to a new job, you can move to a new relationship, you can move out of a relationship. You know, of course, someone dying, you get double. If it's someone close to you, you're losing that relationship as well. So these are the major stressors that we have in our bodies. I can't change the fact that someone dies. I can't change the fact that maybe you lost your job. What I can change is the physical stress in most cases and the chemical stress, the food. If we fix those two, you're able to deal with the other stresses much more effectively. And that's what's so cool about the services we do in our office. We get to the cause of the problems. So other signs, hidden signs of depression. That's what we're talking about today. How about excessive internet use? Uh, uh, virtual worlds that we're living in now have become a major stress. We see it a lot with teenagers and kids um, because they're not interacting. They're not going out and playing. They're not going to parties. They're not dating uh, they're not interacting with their friends. They're not uh, understanding the social pecking order that occurs. And so this is a stress. And so we're kind of locked in our houses, and that becomes a stress unto itself. Some relationships got really solid when people got in lockdown. They got to know each other. They rediscovered each other. Other relationships <clears throat> went to heck in a handbasket because these people can't stand to be around each other. But it's a new stress. And so we have to learn how to deal with that. So if you're you, excessive internet use, it could be adult websites, trying to keep it clean here, uh, gaming sites, online communities, all these things can be signs that you have depression and you're trying to get yourself a little high. You're trying to stimulate your brain. And again, we're going to talk about what to do it in a little bit. Uh, binge eating, of course, and obesity. Uh, I come from a fat family. I was fat when I was a kid. I have stretch marks on my chest, the back of my leg. So I understand. I can say the F word. I used to be fat. But looking back on a lot of my family issues, uh, and every one of my family is fat. My, well, most of them. My mother was overweight. My father was overweight. My sister was overweight. Uh, my grandparents were overweight. And so a lot of that had to do with we, had ac we were poor, and so we didn't have much entertainment except food. Uh, but looking back at some of my aunts and uncles, I believe they were depressed. And so what they did is they turned to food as their outlet. One of my uncles was an alcoholic. And you, of course, increase your risk of heart disease, diabetes, cancer. And fat people, when I was fat too, you joke about it. You'd always try to make it light and jovial. Ha, I'm fat. Look at me. Ha, I'm fat. Oh, I can never fit in that. Ha, 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 ha. That's very depressing. I remember I, there was a picture of me and um, I'm in a bathing suit. And I was a kid. 
and I couldn't see the top of my bathing suit rim because my fat was hanging over it. And that was the picture that changed my life. And I still have that picture. And that picture changed my life because I didn't want to be that way anymore. Now, luckily I was young and I was active and I was able to get over it. But sometimes we're later on in life, it's a lot harder to do. And that can lead to depression. Uh, shoplifting. Once again, what are we doing with shoplifting? We're trying to get a little high. We're trying to get a little rush. And so, um, again, I don't shoplift, but uh, what the psychologists say is you're so depressed that just the thrill of walking out of the store, it's not what you're stealing. Nobody cares. what You don't care what you're stealing. You're trying to get away with it. And so risky behaviors all kind of fall under that category. And many times people that live this high-risk life are really depressed. And we got to get to the cause of that. Pain, of course, as a chiropractor, I'm board certified in orthopedics and pain management and nutrition. We see a lot of pain patients. So with pain patients, it becomes a big issue. Uh, it's depressing. People that have chronic pain, car accidents, uh, you know, we work a lot with people that have had spinal cord injuries, traumatic brain injuries. I'm getting certified, as a matter of fact, in traumatic brain injury diagnosis. Um, another certification, just what I need, right? But yeah, actually, I do need it. I'm, I'm joking with that. But Pain can be very depressing. And so a lot of patients come to us and I tell my staff, especially when I hire new staff, when patients come in, 98% of them are going to be the most charming, wonderful people you've ever met. And they're excited to be here because they know they finally found hope when it comes to getting well and staying well. Some patients are going to be very depressed because they've been in pain for so long. And we have to accept that they're not upset with us. They're upset with the fact that no one's given them an answer yet. And so many times patients come in just, just feisty as heck. And in a few weeks, the staff will say, well, boy, you know, Garrett sure turned around his attitude. Well, that's because Garrett isn't depressed anymore because Garrett isn't in pain anymore. So it's really nice when we see people like that that come in in depression and we work on their nervous system, we work on their digestive system, we get them on a good diet, uh, and then suddenly they start to turn around. And that's how you get to the cause of the depression. Is it chemical? Is it physical? Is it mental? And many times the chemical stuff is easy to fix. We get them on some good supplements. We get them on things like Dr. Joe's Super Greens, Dr. Joe's Essential Source, uh, nitric oxide to increase circulation. B vitamins are so important for patients that are depressed. Digestive enzymes so they can start breaking down their food and absorbing nutrients. And then they start to come out of their depression. And it's really exciting to see that. So we can fix it chemically, and that's usually very easy. Physically, Chiropractic is the most effective, least expensive treatment for pain. So come see us. And many times that solves the depression. And the other thing we have to look at with depression is the digestive system. If you have acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, anybody got that? Raise your hands. 85% of you do, according to my statistics. We got to fix that. Because your stomach's main job is to take proteins, whether it's from a carrot or a steak, unravel them and break them into something called amino acids. Now, the amino acid tryptophan specifically goes into the brain and becomes something called serotonin. Serotonin is the happy neurotransmitter. Every depressed patient I've ever seen, and I've seen tons of them, from clinically depressed to, we had to diagnose it as depression. It really wasn't obvious. Every one of them has a digestive problem. And some symptoms of that, again, could be the acid reflux, the burping. How about bad breath? Breath smells like a potty, like, a, like an outhouse. And people know people like that. That's a digestive problem. And in many cases, we need to take the stomach and physically pull it down away from the diaphragm. And if we pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm, now the stomach is no longer in spasm. The acid reflux hopefully goes away. They start digesting their proteins more efficiently. And now everything starts to work. The number two man at this huge corporation is a very good friend of mine. And he's had some of the best health care in the world. And he's in great shape. And he's mid-60s. No one ever looked at his digestive system. And he has uh, issues with hearing. He has issues with uh, breath. And so we fixed his digestive system. And he's thrilled. And he, this guy's money coming out of his ears. It's not like he has a, a money issue. He didn't know where to go. And when we started talking about it, he says, you know, Dr. Joe, that sounds just, well, he called me Joe, that sounds just like me. I said, come into my office. Let me work on your stomach. And I treated him, I don't know, six, seven, eight times. And suddenly things started to change. So many times it's not that you can afford better care. It's that you don't even know this care exists. And that's what this show is all about. Giving you information about things you don't even know exist and making them available to you. 
the consumer or the patient in this case. So if you do want to make an appointment, you can do it right online, drjoe.com. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. Normally, the first visit for us is $375. That's an exam, x-rays, consultation, first adjustment, and then the next visit going over your x-rays and doing a nutritional consultation with you. We've reduced that to $199. Now, we can't do this forever, of course, but we've reduced that to try to make it more accessible to everyone. If you do want to make an appointment, drjoe.com. We accept most insurances, car accidents, sports injuries, uh, workers' comp injuries, Medicare. And if you've ever been in a car accident ever, if the car was damaged, you were damaged 100% of the time. Do not hesitate. Get to see us as quickly as you can following your car accident. You may need chiropractic care. You may need medical intervention. You may need some injections. You may need medicine. You may need an MRI. We will be the captain of the ship. We'll drive you as to where you need to go, metaphorically speaking, so that we can go ahead and get you as well as possible. So again, if you want to make an appointment, all the supplements, you can do that right online, drjoe.com. So we're talking about hidden signs of depression today exaggerated emotions, outbursts, you're angry, which is inappropriate, you're happy, you're sad, inappropriate levels of this, that can be a sign of depression. Gambling, smoking, um, these are all signs that you may be depressed. Anything excessive that's going to be adversely affecting your, your, your well-being, these can be signs of depression. And of course, you got to start taking care of yourself. You're not taking your supplements. You're not getting your chiropractic care. You're not uh, wanting to go out and work out or just go for a walk or socialize or be with your friends. Maybe you're uh, avoiding intimacy. These all can be signs of depression. And if that's the case, A, recognize it. That's the key is recognizing it. And then B, what do you do? And my team of doctors are really good at this and maybe you might, might need some psychological counseling. But let's get to the cause of the problem, not just treat the symptoms. And so you may think, well, I'm mad at my spouse, or I'm mad at my significant other, or I don't want to hold their hand, I don't want to get intimate with them, I don't want to even cuddle with them, uh, I'd rather be alone. That's a warning sign. Can't blame it on them. That might be something you have to address. And if it is, let's go ahead and fix it. In many cases, if we just get the stomach working properly so you break down the proteins into amino acids, if we get you on good supplements, super greens, essential source, B-complex, adrenal support, digestive enzymes, and of course, everybody should be on vitamin D, especially in the winter and during sick times, um, it changes everything. And I've had so many patients over the years take their supplements and then say, well, I forgot to take them. I kind of fell off the wag I fell off the wagon, I guess, or whatever. And that's when they started seeing the symptoms. And when I sit down with them, I say, did you notice it got worse since you changed your diet, since you're not getting chiropractic care, since you're not taking your supplements? Oh my God, you're absolutely right. I hear it all the time. And so we get them back on track and it's human nature. We're not going to be perfect all the time. Uh, just yesterday, I was talking to a patient, and she said, I got so sick last week, and I'm mad at you. And I said, why? She said, it was my birthday, and my son wanted to give me a treat. So he took me to a fast food restaurant and got me a, a biscuit with bacon and cheese and, and egg on it. She goes, it tasted great. I was sick for two days. She goes, I'm mad at you because you're right. And of course I'm right. Get the nervous system working. Get the digestive system working. Get on a good diet. Get on supplements. And in most cases, most health issues resolve themselves or improve dramatically. And you will say, like patients have said to me for the past 36 years, why didn't I do this sooner? Why did I suffer for so long? So if you're looking for a way to get nat well without drugs and surgery, again, sometimes you need drugs and surgery, go to our website, drjoe.com, book an appointment right online. We have offices Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb, or call us. We accept most insurances, car accidents, sports injuries. First visit used to be $375. we have reduced that to $199. So if you're ready to get well and stay well, make an appointment, drjoe.com. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. We'll be right back. Hey, folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. What we're talking about now, I'm going to give you secrets to living longer. How many people want those? Everybody wants those. I want those. Uh, we were doing a live show the other day and somebody typed in. They said, I want to be as vibrant and healthy as Dr. J as Dr. Joe is at his age. And I said, how do you know what my age is? So I busted him, but I did say it on the air one day. So. Um, but I do want you guys to live a long time. Um, I, I used to joke that there's 26,960 days in the average life. So take how many years you are old Multiply that times 365 days in a year, subtract, subtract it from 26,963. I think that was my number. That's how many days you got left. Now, I don't want that to be true. I want middle age to be 60 for you and not 40. You like that idea? 
And I, I, it's easily done. There's no reason why you shouldn't live a very long, happy, healthy life. We are genetically designed to live well past 100. And yet we make such a big deal over people that are over 100. And I've seen people in their 60s that look like death warmed over. And I've seen people that are 100 that come in and they get adjusted and they come in uh, sometimes by themselves. Usually at that point, they're not driving, but they might take uh, you know, a, a, a ride service or they may have their family bring them in. And we have conversations just like you and I are having a conversation right now. So what's the difference? And there have been studies done. I'm going to tell you what the studies found. Uh, and the one link across the board of the, three, of the people that live the longest, it's Okinawa, Loma Linda, California, and a group uh, in the mountains in Russia. And these were the longest living people in the world, and they all had one thing in common. I'm going to tease you on that and let you, let you know what it is. And I do it every day, what they're doing, because I want you to live a long, long life. So a couple of things you want to do. You want to protect your DNA. Now, DNA is the every cell in the body has DNA, and DNA replicates itself and makes another cell. And as you're, when you're young, the DNA replicates very easily, and you make these young, healthy, vibrant cells. As you get older, the DNA becomes weaker, and it doesn't replicate as easily. If there's a mutation or damage to the DNA, you may replicate unhealthy cells. And if you, can rep if you replicate a cell that doesn't do exactly like the, uh, like the cell used to, and you start creating a lot of those cells, that can be cause called cancer. Cancer is abnormal cell replication. And also with cancer, cells have a, a clock in them, a biological clock. And when the cell is ready to die, it has something called apoptosis that's wired into the cell. Apoptosis tells the cell to die. And if you don't have normal apoptosis, the cells can start to replicate and not die off. That's when you get abnormal cell growth like tumors. So the DNA is really important. So you want to eat right. By far, the most important thing you can do for your DNA is eating right. Eating more fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, and staying away from alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener. And if you're new to the show, you just heard me say, what? Alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener? That's my whole diet. That's all I ever eat. Well, that's what I call the seven deadly sins of nutrition. I made that up. And if you're doing that, you're just, you're just speeding up the clock, baby. That's all you're doing. So the bottom line, healthy habits have a great capability to slow down the aging process. Uh, there was a study, 80-year-old study, found that people who are conscientious, they pay attention to details, they think things through, and they do what's right, usually live longer. A very special person in my life calls it self-awareness. And what self-awareness is, is you have the awareness about what's going on in your life. And I saw a meme on the internet and it really summed it up. There was a shopping cart in the middle of a, of a parking lot. And it said, no CEO of any company ever has ever done this. You don't leave the shopping cart in the middle of the parking lot. You pick up trash when it's on the floor. You open doors for people that have problems. You think, you have a self-awareness about yourself. And you say, how can I make my life better, but how can I make everybody else's life better as well? When I come in the office in the morning, uh, Sometimes wind blows trash around. I didn't put it there. You didn't put it there. It got there. Pick it up, throw it away. When I hire employees, one of the things I tell them is, listen, what I'm looking for is somebody who sees that somebody peed on a toilet seat and you wipe it up. I didn't do it. You didn't do it. Have a self-awareness. Wipe it up so that the office looks nice. And so that is something that I don't think you can teach anyone. I think that's something you either have it or you don't. And I've had a lot of employees over the years and work with a lot of good people. But I've learned that the people that have that self-awareness, those are the people that I like to surround myself with and usually the people I keep in my life for many, many, many decades. Because that self-awareness is so important, that's going to be a key to help you live longer. Paying attention to details. And how could I make somebody else's life better? Making friends. It's another reason to be grateful for your friends. They might help you live longer. A lot of studies show a clear link between strong social ties and living longer. So stay in touch with your friends socialize with them. If you can get out and meet with them, I love one-on-one -on -one meetings. I, I, I don't think there's anything better in the world. And with my employees, we have four offices. So sometimes I have a challenge getting to all the employees. But my goal every week is I want to meet one-on-one -on -one with each employee at least once a day. Now, people like Garrett, people like Damon, my office manager, I'll meet with them sometimes three, four, five times a day. And it's not just 
discussing business, it's being interacting, having that interaction with people. And my mother always said, the more you talk to somebody, the more you have to say to them. And when I was younger, I didn't get that. But then when I moved away to college, I realized that. I'd call my mother every Saturday because rates were cheaper back then. I'd call her every Saturday, and we'd talk on the phone for an hour or two. But as time goes on, the less you talk to somebody, the less you have to say to them. So it's really important to keep that social communication going. That's going to add many, many quality years to your life. You know, I joke, but it is, there's a little uh, point of seriousness, too, is I say, i got to make younger friends because a lot of my friends aren't going to take care of themselves. They're not going to be around much longer. And I joke about it, but I want to surround myself with people that are taking care of themselves so that we can all grow old together. And when I say old, many, 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 many more years together. And choose your friends wisely. Your friends' habits rub off on you. My mother used to say, I do a lot of shows on my mother, don't I? My mother used to say, you're hanging out with the wrong people. Or you should hang out more with that person, right? Running with the wrong gang, getting in with the wrong gang. There's a lot to be said about that. Because if you're, if you're obese, you want to hang out with obese people. Better to hang out with skinny people. Take on their habits. If you smoke, don't hang out with smokers because they're all going to smoke together. If you drink, drinkers hang out together. I had a friend of mine one time say uh, he got married, and we always used to hang out together. And then as he got married, of course, you drift away. Uh, from some of your friends. And I said, hey, listen, man, you know, it's, it's, uh, uh, the three of us can go out, me, you, and your wife. It's okay. You know, it's not like it's a date. We're just hanging out as friends. And he said something that really stuck with me. He says, one of the problems is that you don't drink. And I said, I don't understand why that's a problem. He goes, we like to hang out with people that drink. And I thought, interesting. So my good habits, he didn't want to, to rub off on him, so to speak. So choosing your friends wisely is really important. So in my, again, I've been in practice 36 years. We see a lot of patients. And many times when I don't see a patient getting well, we want to find out why they're not getting well. So can we give better service? Can we do better chiropractic adjustments? Do they need medical intervention? Do they need supplements? Sometimes, we talked earlier that sometimes they're just depressed. But if you're depressed, find out why. And getting to the cause of that is one of the secrets to living longer. We all get depressed. I've been depressed. There have been parts of my life that, boy, I wouldn't want to live over again. I wouldn't want anybody to live over again. But most of my life, I would love to live over again. They were amazing times. And so appreciation, that self-awareness is important, getting to the cause of the problem. And if you are around toxic people, not just toxic food and environments, it might be something to consider that you might want to start to drift away. And that's going to help you get better. Because my goal, again, is get you well and keep you well. That's, that's our motto in, at Health Plus Wellness Centers. Naturally, we want to get you well and keep you well. A little play on words there. But hanging around with the wrong people can be a big issue. So start thinking about it. Is this person going to enhance my life or not? And if not, eh, there's other friends out there. Other things we can do to live longer. Take a nap. One of my favorite hobbies. I was never a big napper. I never found it that impressive. But I remember years ago, when I, before I even went to, to chiropractic college, uh, there was a, a chiropractor in Lynnhurst, New Jersey, on Ridge Road. can't remember his name now. Bob. His name was Bob. Tarantino? No, I think that's one of my – anyway, not important. Um, anyway, he had a massive practice. He saw tons of patients, and I wanted to be him. He was my guru. I wanted to be like him. And I remember going there one day, and I said, well, I can come over, and we can go out to lunch. He goes, I don't, I don't go out to lunch. He says, I take a nap at lunch. And I thought that was weird. Here I was a 16, 18-year-old kid, and I thought, napping at lunch, how stupid is that? Looking back now, I get it. And if I have really busy days, sometimes I have to do radio shows, television shows, see a lot of patients, uh, back in the old days, live lectures, traveling, you really learn to embrace the nap. And don't nap for more than 10 minutes, and don't nap past 2 o'clock in the afternoon. But napping is something that can really help uh, keep you young because you kind of start the day over again. It really works. So the art of the nap is something you might want to consider. Probably the most important thing you can do, and I gave you a tease at this at the top of the show, was what's the number one thing that people that have the longest lives, what's the one thing they have in common? And there was a study done. I think it was National Geographic who did it. And they went around the world, and they said, what groups of people have the longest life, and what do they have in common? So they found three groups of people that had the longest life expectancy. One of them was in Okinawa, Japan. One was in the mountains of Russia. I can't remember what the town was. And one was in a place called Loma Linda, California. 
three very different demographics. What could these three groups of people have in common? Well, they searched, and it was it exercise, was it family bonds, and all of those were important. But the number one thing they all had in common was they ate mostly a plant-based diet. Now, Loma Linda, California was a religious group there, and they ate a plant-based diet. Okinawa Island in Japan, they ate mostly a plant-based diet. They did eat some seafood. Um, and then you know, up, in, up in Russia, they ate a plant-based diet as well. So the one deciding factor among anything else I can advise you, if you want to live a long, happy, healthy life, is your diet. So when I say a plant-based diet, what does that look like? Well, vegan diet is no animal products at all. Plant-based diet is a little bit of animal products, but a major, major majority being a vegan diet. Now, I'm vegan. I've been vegan for 34 years, and it works really well for me. And I promise you, if you do it, it'll work well for you. Uh, I think everyone does well on a vegan diet because our body is designed to eat fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds. It's not designed to eat alcohol, meat, sugar, dairy, coffee, soda, and artificial sweetener, which is the standard American diet. But that's the key. And when you add this to your diet, and I just, just two days ago I had a patient, and I don't adjust a lot of patients anymore. Sometimes I'll meet them on the first visit, and then my other doctors take over the treatment. And my doctors were a little backed up seeing patients, and I was in my office, and uh, one of my assistants came to me and said, hey, can you help out? Can you kind of help us get caught up? I said, yeah, sure. So I went out and I adjusted this patient and I said, so how are we doing? And he gets off, he sits up on a table he's, and he's almost teary-eyed. He said, doc, he says, I only saw you on the first visit for a few minutes. He says, but I've been following you. I follow your podcast, Dr. Joe, for the health of it on my podcast service. Uh, I listen to your shows on radio and television. He says, I'm a huge fan of yours. And I decided six months ago, no, three months ago, I'm sorry, three months ago, I was going to do what you said, regardless of what it was. And he says, I don't know if you remember me. He says, but I've lost 35 pounds in three months. He says, I feel great. I've done no dieting. He says, I feel great. I have more energy. My pain is diminished dramatically. And he says, I got my love life back. My wife and I are back to are, are, are healthy again. I don't keep it clean here. He says, I can't thank you enough. You saved my life. And I hear stories like this, not every day, every couple of hours of every day. And I said, so how did it work out for you? He says, I never thought I can give up the bad foods. He says, but I said, I'm going to do it, blanket. No matter what, doc, what whatever Dr. Joe says, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to prove him right or wrong. And, and he said in 60 days, he says, my life was totally turned around. He said, I'm saving a ton of money. I'm feeling great. He says, I opened my refrigerator now, and it's kind of cool because there's colors in there. It used to just be grays and reds, which was just meats and you know uh, dried up foods. He says, I've got fruits and vegetables in there. He says, I feel great. I'm saving a ton of money. I'm taking all your supplements. He says, I've saved so much money that I can afford to come see you, take the supplements, and I still have tons of money left over. So if nothing else, the motivation to be healthy and live longer should be that you're going to make a lot more money. Or you keep a lot more money, I should say. But I hear these stories nonstop, all day, every day from all around the world. And I don't sell carrots. I don't sell broccoli. So there's no benefit to me if he changes his diet or not. I love the fact he takes supplements and gets chiropractic care. But everything changed in this guy's life in just a few weeks. And so a plant-based diet, mostly fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, is the secret above everything else to a long and healthy life. Now, if you don't know what to eat, if you go to our website, drjoe.com, uh, type in, so what can I eat? And I did a whole hour in a studio by myself, and I did a whole hour on breakfast, lunches, dinner, snacks, parties, uh, stocking your pantry, unstocking your pantry. So that's a real good guide as to what to eat. And just do it. Do it for 60 days. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I lied to you. I'm not the first person to lie to you. Ladies, am I the first man to lie to you? <laughs> but if I'm right, which I am, then you'll say, okay, Dr. Joe was right. And I like the smell of meatball sandwiches still. And I like, you know, pizza cooking in the oven with cheese and wheat smells good to me. But I just don't eat it because it's not worth it. It's like the lady I talked about earlier. She went out. She got a, bis a breakfast biscuit for her birthday, and she felt sick for two days. It wasn't worth it. But she had to learn on her own. And she goes, you were right. I knew you were right. When I did it, I, I said, Dr. Joe's going to be mad at me. I said, I'm not mad at you. You're mad at you. She goes, oh, I'm very mad at myself. So pretty easy to do. So we're talking today about the secrets to living longer. It's not hard. It's easy. And it's so inexpensive. And there's no reason why you shouldn't be doing it. 
Losing weight, of course, is going to be a great way to live longer. However, if you're eating a plant-based diet, chances are you're going to lose a ton of weight. And if you're eating a plant-based diet and sucking down cookies and cakes and donuts and pastas and brownies, well, that's not a good, healthy plant-based diet. It's a plant-based diet, but it's not a healthy plant-based diet. Keeping moving is really important. Staying in motion. Uh, when I used to see a lot of patients, I would r literally run from room to room to room to room, and I would see tons of patients. I won't even tell you how many I saw because most people don't believe I did it, but I did. Uh, so as I'm getting older, I don't run as much as I used to, but I like to go for a walk. I like to go out and garden. Uh, last night when I got home, I pulled some weeds just to get out of the house. Sun was setting. It was a little warmer, and um, I got out, and I spent maybe 10 or 15, 20 minutes out there pulling weeds. Now, could I spray them with a toxic chemical? Yeah, I could do that. But the pulling the weeds was therapeutic in itself. And I got my gardens all, all set for spring already. I've got my wood chips laid down. I've got, I planted my seeds already. Um, starting to grow my tomatoes and my cucumbers and uh, my peppers. And um, my figs are already growing. Blueberries are already growing. Red, 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 blackberries are already there. So, yeah, I like getting outside. I don't like working out. I don't enjoy the gym. It's not something I like. I have an old neck injury and I, a lot of exercise I can't do because it flares up my neck injury. Um, so just staying in motion is going to be a key um, to staying healthy. Of course, avoiding alcohol. We talk about that so many times. Uh, if you're going to drink, don't. But if you do, still don't. But if you still do, three glasses of water for every glass of alcohol. That's the Dr. Joe plan. Not saying you should drink. But if you do drink, three glasses of water for every drink. So if it's a beer, it's a scotch, whatever it is, I want you to have three glasses of water along with that. It's going to prevent you from dehydrating. It's going to flush it out of your system. I also recommend if you're going to go drinking, and I shouldn't tell you this. All right, I'll tell you. Super Green's an essential source, a scoop of each before you go out drinking. And if you drink more than two drinks, a scoop of essential source and Super Green's when you get home. Extra bonus, Super Green's an essential source. Because alcohol destroys brain cells. It flushes nutrients out of your body. It, deplete, it, it puts stress on the liver, depletes your enzymes. I'm going to try to rebuild that. So there is a trick you can do. I shouldn't teach you that, but I did. Uh, forgiving people. This is interesting, too. When they interview people, centenarians, people that are over 100 years old, um, they all, one of the things they found is that they forgave people who hurt them. Now, we've all had people in our lives screw us over, and it sucks, and I don't like it. I don't think you like it either. But time, time heals all, but you also have to forgive, and it's really important to do that. And when you actually make a conscious effort to say, you know what, I know this person wronged me, I'm sorry they did it. I forgive them for what they did. I won't forget what they did. I forgive them. I don't have to socialize with them anymore. I'm going to move on with my life. Because holding a grudge doesn't hurt them. It hurts you. So I know that's sometimes hard to do. But when you get your body healthy, it's a lot easier to do these things. If you're eating a good diet, if you have neck pain and back pain and shoulder pain, and you get chiropractic care, which is the most effective, least expensive treatment for back pain, when you do these things, fix the digestive system. Maybe we have to pull the stomach away from the diaphragm so to fix the acid reflux. Uh, we take supplements. Minimum supplements, of course, are what? Super Greens, an essential source. They're on the website, drjoe.com. We can ship them to you, uh, or you can go pick them up. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, Stockbridge, and West Cobb. Save yourself some uh, postage. Come pick them up. Love to have you do that. And when you take care of yourself, things like forgiving, things like losing weight, things like letting go of the past, things like getting toxic people out of your life, toxic environments out of your life, become a whole lot easier. Grieving is a whole lot easier. It's normal to grieve. It's absolutely normal to grieve. End of a relationship, end of death of a loved one, uh, changing jobs. Uh, yeah, it's sad. But you're able to grieve in a healthy manner. Grieving is important, but you want to do it healthy. You don't want the grieving to become an, a health issue with you as well. And so that's why... A, getting out of pain is the, usually the easiest thing. If you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, headaches, numbness, tingling, come see us. Chiropractic, again, is the most effective, least expensive treatment for back pain. And the biggest complaint I get is, why didn't I do this sooner? Why didn't I come see you guys sooner? I don't know that. We have a medical division. We can do PRP, which is wonderful for pain and regeneration, arthritis. Uh, we can take your own platelets out of your blood and inject them back into the body to stimulate new growth and healing. Uh, works great for even hair replacement, um, erectile dysfunction, women with urinary leakage, women with low sex drive after having a lot of kids. Sometimes things aren't as sensitive as they used to be. Uh, so PRP might be the answer for you. Uh, we can do hormone balancing, blood work, nutrition protocols. 
We do hair analysis to see if we have heavy metal toxicity. We can do cortisol levels. So on our website, drjoe.com, there's a, a tab that says services. And we have everything listed that we do there, weight loss. So if you're ready to get well, we'd love to be your doctors. And you can pick and choose what you'd like. And to make an appointment, you can do it online or call us. The phone numbers are all over the websites. And the first visit is, no, visit is normally $375. We've reduced that to $199. That's an exam, x-rays, consultation, first chiropractic adjustment, and then going over the x-rays on the next visit, and a nutritional evaluation. Now, if you, we accept you as a patient for the first visit, you're going to need more than one visit. Nobody's ever healed in one visit. So don't come in and think, okay, I'm going to get that first visit and I'm done. If you, don't even waste your time and your money. I'm, I'm telling you, I'd rather tell you, have you not come in than to come in. But if you're ready to get well, if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, we're pretty good at this. We get patients from all over the world saying, why don't doctors do this in Romania and Germany and Japan and Guam? And I don't know. I think all doctors should do what we do. If there was a better way to be doing healthcare, I'd be doing it. And I'm searching every day to find new ways to do it so I can make it better for you. Because again, I'm a patient too. So if you want to make an appointment, drjoe.com. We'd love to have you. All the supplements we talk about, super greens, an essential source. Of course, the minimum supplements, vitamin D, especially for the immune system during COVID and, and, and winter months. Digestive enzymes, if you eat a cooked meal, I recommend you take a digestive enzyme supplement every day. When, anytime you eat a cooked meal, I take it. B-complex for the nervous system, adrenal support for cortisol and stress, omega-3 fatty acids for brain function and inflammation. Um, all of them are on the website, drjoe.com. Come by, pick them up. We'd love to say hi to you. Um, and it'll save shipping, or we can ship them to you. And it, when you order, we usually ship within a day or two, which is really kind of cool. So uh, all that information, the website, drjoe.com. If you are a, a podcast junkie, this, along with tons of others of podcasts, hundreds of hours of podcasts, are on your podcast server. You want to search Dr. Joe for the health of it, D-R-J-O-E, Dr. Joe for the health of it, health of it. And that's our podcast. And I also want you to do me a favor. I give you guys a lot of good information. You can send questions through the website. I'm more than happy to answer them for you. This is your cover charge. Cover charge is I need you to follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and um, YouTube, at Dr. Joe Esposito. That's my handle, at Dr. Joe Esposito. I need you to do that for me because if you like what you're hearing, and I hope you do, uh, I want to get the word out to other people, and I can't do that without you. So if you would, please follow us on social media, at Dr. Joe Esposito. And the website has over 1,500 hours of podcasts, blogs. Uh, sign up for our newsletter. Just send us your email address. We'll never give your email address out. Uh, we have tens of thousands of people on our newsletter list. We send out really good information. Garrett does an amazing job with that. Um, again, we want to be your doctors. Children. Children benefit tremendously from chiropractic care because if they start out healthy, they grow healthy. If they're crooked, they grow crooked. So there's no age limit on chiropractic care. There's no age limit on getting the nervous system working, the digestive system working, and a good diet. And the supplements, of course, are good for everybody. So, folks, if you want to make an appointment, any more information, the website, again, drjoe.com. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. Tell your friends about the show. We'll catch you next time.